Randall comes from the Boston area. He was born and raised in Kansas. As a child, he loved the outdoors and exploring and wanted to be an archaeologist. However, when he found a guitar as his treasure at one point, he decided instead he wanted to be a famous rock musician. And he used to sing with his families, who were very musical. And in ninth grade, uh, wrote his first song for school, a little ditty something about Odysseus. Uh, he went on to play bass in a number of bands with great names like The Misuse and Brain Helicopter. I like those names. <laughs> where he explored his passion of singing and playing. And he went to college and he studied law and public policy. He worked, he studied at Harvard. He worked in grant writing for Harvard faculty and became involved in the union organization, which he said uh, was life-changing for him, being the secretary of 3,600 person union, getting to know so many. Eventually he got married, had four children, went on to law school. He's been very busy with his family, a large family, and employed uh, by the U.S. Attorney's Office as an assistant U.S. attorney. And he continued on with his music as he could. And a little later down the line, not too many years ago, started as a, a solo singer-songwriter. And people started noticing not only his voice, but his lyrics. They've been getting attention, dropping jaws, getting feedback. For instance, Tom Smith, who's in the audience today, said that Randall writes songs of common life presented like a conversation with a friend over a dinner table. Singer-songwriter Don White said, the first time I heard Randall Crumb's song Water Wheel, I knew I was going to record it. He has captured beautifully in one four-minute song an idea I've been inarticulately yapping about for decades. My hope is now that lots of people will make an effort to discover the work of this very talented man. And he is singing out there, and he has his first CD, I believe, here today. And very excited to hear the words and music of Randall Crumb. Please help me welcome Randall this morning. Thank you. That was very, very kind. Um, so I'm going to start with a song I wrote about two years, one of the first songs I wrote in this uh, recent reincarnation as a non-rock musician. Um, <laughs> It, uh, two years ago this time about sort of just uh, summer and celebrating the feeling of summer at the time what you can tell is just about to come to an end and wanting to hold on to that moment. It's called Speed of Time. And on my frozen face I want to see this second captured Warm glow rising in my cheeks I'm walking on dry ground The threat of rain gone with no trace In this daylight nothing matters And the world could be at peace Take your invitation, I'll come out of the shade. I hadn't meant to stay for so long. I'm folding like the leaves under your rays. These are the days when we can do no wrong. We cut out a blue sky, edges sharper than a postcard scene. Faded colors I remember Don't look anything like these Blindsided and tongue-tied No need to tell you what a well heart means After a long and lonely winter To find myself among your trees I'll take your I'll come out of the shade, you know I had meant to stay for so long. I'm folding like the leaves under your rays. These are the days when we can do no wrong. Well, I know that. 
that someday will disappear just like an untold dream. Give me just a little longer to notice everything I see. I'll take your invitation. I'll come out of the shade. You know I had meant to stay for so long. I'm folding like the leaves under your rays. These are the days when we can do no wrong. Speed of time, slow. So uh, in the process of becoming a folk singer from doing all the other stuff that I was doing beforehand, I, you know, I wanted to do it right, and I wanted to learn what the, the rules and responsibilities were. <laughs> and one of the things I, I picked up early on is there's a couple kinds of songs you have to have, and one of them is a song about a train. And I, you know, I didn't have one for a while, and I felt deficient. I felt other people were out there doing their train songs, and I didn't have one to compete with that. So, but I wanted to, be, to keep it real and do something honest, so I wrote about the, the train that I know something about, which is the Lowell Commuter Rail. So this is my, my train song, and I hope I've fulfilled my requirements now. When I climbed aboard in Boston, I guess I should have known. The passengers sat silently in equidistant rows. Some were staring straight ahead, and others' eyes were closed. I was on a train of zombies, and I was all alone. I moved along the aisle between the undead passengers, asking for a seat. It was as if they hadn't heard. They sat and stared and glazed in comprehension till I passed. I was on a train of zombies, and hope was fading fast. On a train of zombies unaware but still upright Black boxes in their hands lit with otherworldly light Some connected to their brains with wires that were white I was on a train of zombies headed out into the night I climbed into the vestibule that says no riders here Waiting for the train to slow so I might disappear But the conductor ripped the slider open and he smiled with savage glee Like Jack Nicholson in The Shining as he said, your ticket please On a train of zombies unaware but still upright Black boxes in their hands lit with otherworldly light some connected to their brains with wires that were white. I was on a train of zombies headed out into the night. The train slowed down and sped up for no reason I could tell. The conductor at the door as if to guard the gates of hell. The lights began to flicker, they went out and then came back. Uterail incompetence or the sign of the attack. The seconds pass like minutes and the minutes pass like days. In the silent rolling tomb I was accepting of my fate. Then it shuddered to a stop by my own rusty station sign. I headed for the exit and I never looked On a train of zombies unaware but still upright Black boxes in their hands lit with otherworldly light Some connected to their brains with wires that were white I was on a train of zombies On a train of zombies On a train of zombies headed out into the night Now, thinking about it, that's, I guess, my little technology song as well in response to that poem that was said about uh, some of the things that I didn't think we needed on the train either, but there they are, and we have to live with them. 
Now, uh, those of you who know anything about my writing know that when I do write romantic songs, they're usually failed romance songs because those are just so much more fun to write about. Things that don't work out or doomed from the start or anything like that. But every once in a while I decide that, that people get the wrong idea about me and think I, I lack romantic optimism. And so I try to write one where things work out for the people involved. This is one such song. It's called Shape of a Perfect Heart. optimistic song. It has to be an in-tune song, too, right? It's easier than you think I don't draw too many lines I wait till it is my turn I know that I still have time I won't tell you what you need Or say I'm the only one If it was meant to be We'll know when the moment comes But something inside is telling me That when the music starts The way that we move will be shape of a perfect heart My heart is an open book I won't try to lead you on If I'm not the one you want I'll be the first to be gone But whether it takes one day all of my patient time I'm ready to take my chances I'm ready to travel blind Cause something inside is telling me That when the music starts The way that we move will be The shape of a perfect time I know that life can be complicated That doesn't mean that love has to be I'll carry your wish with mine I'll throw the first penny in I'm not looking for a promise Just somewhere we can begin To follow the path that leads Out through the open door Whatever it wants to take us Whatever we're headed for Cause something inside is telling me That when the music starts The way that we move will be The shape of a perfect heart The way that we move will be The shape of a perfect heart So this next song is the song about which Don White said such nice things. It's uh, the title track of my CD, Water Wheel. And it's, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those interesting things. It's a poem that, or a song that kind of wrote itself without me really knowing what I was getting into when I wrote it. It just kind of had a couple of experiences that showed up in my writing journal that I keep on the train. That's where I do most of my work now because no one will talk to me. Uh, I used to <laughs> sit down and open my book and start scrawling things down that occurred to me. A few of them seemed to fit together right and seemed to fit together with some chords on the guitar that same evening. And before I knew it, uh, this song came together and it turned out beautifully. It's a song more or less about me and, and, and a lot of people coming to terms with 
you know, what you are and what you're not and the things you will do and the things you ne won't necessarily get around to. Um, it's called Water Wheel. My oldest friend has never settled down He's on a path of self-discovery that never ends In songs he lists the names of every town He's woken up in to find his favorite breakfast but I am a water wheel Turned by forces old and powerful Built for useful work in this one place I am a water wheel Not a rolling stone one I loved now gone for many years long for what lay around each corner we would turn but what she wanted was never there and I never found a way to make her stay I am Turned by forces old and powerful Built for useful work in this one place I am a water wheel Not a rolling stone My daughter says that I still have time I could chart a different course, however strange. Why don't I do the things I never did? Now that there's nothing that ties me here. But I am a water wheel, turned by forces old and powerful. Built for useful work in this one place I am a water wheel Not a rolling stone Not a rolling stone So I think I'm going to do one more, and this is a song, it's sort of, my, it's a, one of my more recent songs, and it's sort of uh, my own little uh, anthem for all of us, I think, who are out here doing our thing with uh, writing and singing and playing, uh, not necessarily thinking it's going to be our ticket to wealth and fame, or 15 minutes of fame at least, or a reality, reality, uh, reality TV show, um, or anything like that, but it will, it's just something we want to do and we do and share. Uh, I wrote it about songwriters, but it's equally true of the spoken word artists, and uh, so I, I thought it was an appropriate thing to play here. It's uh, called Everybody's Saying You Can't Do That. Everybody's saying that you can't do that. You got to have a kind of talent that you don't have. You need a lot more money and a song that sells. Have to give up all your no other dreams and nothing else. Well, that's not right. I don't agree. The world don't need more superstars, just you and me. Living our lives and playing our songs and leaving something beautiful before we're gone. Everybody's saying this life ain't fair. You have to step on other people. 
to get somewhere It's gonna take a lot of me time to make art that's true And you only help somebody who can help you too Maybe that's right, but I don't agree The world don't need more prima donnas Just you and me Sharing our words and doing our parts And listening to each other with open hearts There's a man playing a song in the Boston subway And he's leaving more to the world than Paris Hilton ever could Everybody's saying it won't work out You've got too many years on you and too much doubt You don't have the right connections, you need better friends You have to be the kind of person that you've never been Well, if that's right, I'm off the bus The world don't mean no famous people, just all of us Showing the world one song at a time There's something new and beautiful in every mind Yes, we're showing the world one poem at a time There's something new and beautiful in every mind This is an excerpt from a story entitled Awake in the Dark. Phil Waldron unloosened his soiled apron, walked through the swinging door, and sat in a booth furthest from the kitchen. After a morning of serving up orders of scrambled eggs and buttermilk pancakes and buttered toast, he rested during a lull at the Full, full Moon Diner. He surveyed the 36-seater eatery, its tile floor and oak walls and booths, lined up alongside the railroad-style windows. He looked out at the highway in front of the diner. He heard a cacophony of sounds that enveloped him, the heavy bass that beat out from a speeding sports car, the churning garbage truck next to the dumpster, and the evangelist who yelled at strangers. He eyed the customers, workers in jeans and tool belts, businessmen in suit coats and ties, college students wearing baseball caps and sneakers. He was a 24-year-old cook in a Massachusetts town that bordered New Hampshire. He had thinning dark hair and narrow eyes and a slender, rigid body. On those days he didn't work, he stayed home in his apartment surrounded by mildewed books where he straddled the boundary between what had come before him and what lay ahead. It had been almost a year since he had come looking for work arriving with his longing, his desire to touch life, not incrementally, but all at once, taking life on without hesitation or fear. Untethered from his roots, Phil began meeting people that had been fixtures at the full moon. There was Gladys Moore, a tiny woman with luminescent white hair and skin that dangled under her chin, making her look like a turkey in flight as she raced around balancing plates of food. He listened to her daily admonishments. A lady leaves something on her plate, she would shout at a customer who scurried out the door. He admired how she stood up to the new waitress, the one with black liner around her eyes who was sleeping with the owner. Andy came down hard on Gladys whenever Carmela complained that she was being harassed by the older waitress. Phil imagined Gladys as she might have looked in her youth and wondered why no man had claimed her before the crease lines and hardness set in. Phil liked how she softened whenever they spoke. Being alone is not the worst thing, she would say. You've always got yourself. Phil was intrigued with his boss. Everyone called Andy the hat, since he usually appeared wearing something on his head. He was a man whose emotions were explosive and visible like a woman's. Andy was easily moved to tears whenever he heard a hard luck story. When Andy saw Phil, he would give him lessons on how to live. Use your left hand as well as your right hand when you work here. Why else did God give us two hands? Phil accepted these platitudes, just as he accepted Carmela's newfound status as queen of the diner. 
and knew enough not to answer the ringing payphone on her days off since Andy always beat the hired help to the phone. Still, Phil was appreciative of Andy's efforts to engage him, describing the progress of his new contemporary house being built on the west side of town, explaining to Phil each detail and how one's dream house came together from an architect's model to the actual laying down of the materials. He had even promised Phil that the two would one day get into his sailboat and go see the Mediterranean sun. The brief rest did Phil some good, replenishing him for the final push before the diner closed. He would get up and walk back behind the marble top counter, take down the board listing the day's dinner specials, and erase each one. Over the next few hours, he and Bean, the cook, sliced piles of roast beef and cut up vegetables and diced mounds of cheese. Phil was learning how to cook from a man approaching 70 but acted like a colt of 25. Bean's favorite stories involved Andy, especially when Andy had forgotten a rubber drain stopper and a customer's hot turkey sandwich. Andy was so embarrassed and hurt, he walked a waitress down into the kitchen and fired her. You've got to love the guy, said Bean. He really believes what he says, even if he can't see how far his life falls from the bullseye. So that's an excerpt of a short story, if you're interested, how it ends. The books are back there. I'm interested in readers, not money, so you can give Cheryl the money. <laughs> Thank you. and pear apricot then there